I think now it's working. Okay, my talk is in fact uh, linked uh, to the previous one um, because uh, but they talked about lots of things, but it's linked in the the the, the thing on, of the middle, the performance monitoring. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about a patch we have in Triton D for monitoring some things. Some of them overlap with what Copengo did. And I think it's, again, uh, an occasion to talk about what kind of tools we could provide in Triton Core or make it easy to create this kind of tools, OK? Uh, the first point is, is why, uh, or what? It's, sorry, it's very slow, OK? Um, why uh, have uh, application performance monitoring? Uh, the word already says it, it's for performance, so it's not usually linked to bugs and crashes, although uh, we have in, in this small patch, which is of course available in, in Bitbucket, we have some tools that help a little bit managing better uh, reporting of bugs. But that's not the key point. The key point, of course, is performance. And we, we've got some different requirements from Copengo. Copengo said they, they cannot access the Triton D server directly. In our case, we always have access to Triton D server of our customers. So, uh, but the problem sometimes in analyzing uh, the performance issues is that they have already happened. So we also would like to cover uh, um, moments in which the performance is bad, but you cannot easily reproduce that situation, okay? So that would be a, an added requirement to what Copengo's needs, uh, to Copengo's needs, okay? And the term application performance monitoring, uh, you will see in many places that we talk not only about the application itself, but the full stack, okay? We've suffered uh, problems Mm, not, not a lot with hardware, but of course there are sometimes problems with hardware. We've suffered problems with virtualization. There's, the customer says, no, the perfect, the, the uh, virtualization technology is great. Uh, it's being used by NASA, I don't know. Uh, and it's, it cannot fail. And you constantly cannot reproduce the problem. You say, oh, it works more or less. OK, the customer said that it's very slow. And until you test it in the production server, you don't have uh, real feedback of what slow means for them. So there's another point here. Of course, PostgreSQL, we have suffered problems with older versions of PostgreSQL, 9.1, for example, uh, or 9.2, I think, uh, with some large IVs uh, in a select query could be really slow in some situations. Uh, of course, there is Python. You can use Python or uh, PyPy or PyP or whatever it's named. Sorry, I will. Put the cable. Uh, of course, then there is Triton D. Oh, Thank you. Uh, most of the time, it's not uh, Triton D, but uh, there are sometimes uh, things to improve in Triton D. Most usually, it's Triton D modules, something that you have developed for the customer, which is not uh, perfectly optimized. It could be the network. Every now and then, we get uh, re uh, requests from customers that they have some problems, and it might be specific to them. And of course, there's the client. We have uh, several known uh, perform uh, performance issues with uh, Triton client, especially in tree lists and things like that. So ideally, um, we would like to see a picture of everything. Okay, But I'm going to concentrate uh, only on, uh, I think this is 
Well, I'm going to concentrate only on the application part, okay? So apm.pi is a, a, a file which is also needs a, a small patch to this patcher.pi, which adds uh, basically three kind of uh, improvements. One of them is uh, a couple of signals. You can seek user one to the Chiton D server, and it will print uh, the RPC calls that are being executed by the server at that moment okay I can show you I think I've got I tried it um, you can do you see it from the okay this is a, a standard Python lock okay but here it's the output of sending the signal user one to try to deal with this patch, okay? It will show you a transaction ID that we, we create randomly, uh, the database name, the database PID, because this al would allow you to link, uh, to have this complete vision of the performance issues. If you can see that the CPU of uh, PostgreSQL is high on one process ID, you can know which of your um, RPC requests is uh, using that process ID, okay? That database, that PostgreSQL process ID. You've got the user, you've got the host, um, time by stamp when it started, and the total elapsed time in seconds for the request. And of course, some information about the object and the, the RPC call and some part of the of the parameters given to it okay then you've got also the possibility of sending single user one uh, sorry single single user two that that's just using kill you know the the unix uh, command line kill single user two to the process id and it will print you a backtrace of what Triton is doing at that moment. Okay, I think there's a large lock here, but I can. I'm gonna start the server, and even if I don't. Okay, this is, well, this is a small script that we have to, to easily find the process ID and send the signal to all process IDs if you are using several Triton processes, okay? This is the, the top operation, which is, uh, if, if I had some RPC calls here, it would be showing what it's going on, okay? So, I would have to probably duplicate here and you would have to search on the lock because the operation is very slow you need to sorry it's very fast okay here you have the the uh, top operation and which is single user one and then you can have a backtrace of what Triton D is doing at that moment. And this is very useful because uh, even in, in debugging on your one developing, because you will find very easily which part of uh, Triton is, uh, is your bottleneck. Or is your, maybe you have a loop that it's uh, constantly doing the same thing several times. So it's a very simple way of watching uh, or seeing what is going on. And it's also, of course, useful for a production server, okay? So these are the two signals that the patch provides. Then this, is, uh, this overlaps with Copengo's uh, features. We also uh, have a profiling 
the, the possibility of profiling. What we do here is that we can use either Street Profile or the profiler of Python or VMProf. VMProf is a, a PyPy project which is a different profiler. C profile or profile from Python, uh, it's exhaustive. It tells you exactly the time spent on each and every call, but this adds a lot of overhead. It's not something that you can put uh, continuously in a production server. On the other side, VMProf, it's a profiler that basically uh, it's kind of the backtrace thing that I have just shown, and it will mm, uh, check for backtraces every 10 milliseconds, every 15 milliseconds, or the, the amount of time you put on it, and it will create a profile out of this information. It adds around two or three percent overhead only in Python, so it can be used in a production system. And what we do here is that we, uh, well, I just wanted to show you also, and it has VMProf, you have a, a tool to view it uh, in a nice picture, but of course you can use it in the console uh, with a similar output uh, of the one they showed for profile, okay? So again, we, we configure it in tritondi.conf, and you can say, okay, start this profiler uh, under these conditions. And the conditions can, can include the RPC call, but it can include the user, uh, for example, or uh, even the parameters. You can uh, use a small, simple eval expression to say I want or I don't want to start the profiler and which profiler you want. Um, and then we store this backtrace according to a criteria. So you might say, okay, I want to be improve all requests uh, of this RPC call, but in, in fact, I just want to store the backtrace of RPC uh, calls that take more than two seconds, for example. So you just don't have to the need of uh, a lot of data. And it stores the transaction ID. So as we will see afterwards, uh, we can add some logging information and you can link uh, all the information from what I already uh, told here. Okay, you, have, you will have the process ID and you can link it to the backtrace. The process ID of the PostgreSQL server and link it and link it uh, to the backtrace. Sorry, uh, link it to the profile. And uh, apart from the profiling, we also have some logging. We just create a log file, very simple one, uh, in JSON format, so it's easier to parse if needed, in which we put the transaction ID, the time spent, the RPC request, user, etc. And it's again based on our criteria in Triton D. Instead of storing of all your all your RPC calls, if you don't want you can just store uh, those RPC calls that take more than a given time, and that's it, okay? And eventually, the patch also has uh, something similar to Sentry patch that uh, Open Labs guys created, which instead of showing you a backtrace when the application crash crashes, it says, okay, we are going to fix this, and it gives the user a transaction ID so the user can call you and say, oh, I've got a problem, and the number is 21 or whatever, okay? And we could even make it more user-friendly because it's going to be a transaction ID, a long number, so we could maybe make an improvement and give a string that the user can uh, understand and memorize. So that's basically it. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. We also uh, have a small application for gathering data, which is not published yet, in which we store and send information from in JSON format, in which we pick information from the server for monitoring the server, and our idea, but it's not done yet, is to probably pick up some information from uh, the logs and the APM uh, patch I just mentioned. Are there any questions? No? 
Anyone for the breakfast? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, that's it. so thank you, Albert.